Hi, welcome to Train Signal and the continuation of the Server 2012 Advanced Features course. I wanted to turn our attention to dynamic access control and file classification. Dynamic access control is a very interesting addition to the Server 2012 family of features, uh, inasmuch as it provides an entirely different approach to file permissions. You're thinking, okay, we're, that's the last place I expected to see new functionality, but sure enough, there it is. Microsoft is shifting gears a little bit, providing a new opportunity, not a requirement, uh, but an option if you choose to have it, to have a new way to assign permissions to files. This is a mechanism that promises to be more flexible in some ways, to be a better way of describing the way the real world interacts with files and file systems. So that's kind of our, our coming attractions here. In order to properly take advantage of dynamic access control, we need to pause for a moment, take a little digression, into an area called file classification, which on its own is not a terribly exciting feature, uh, but does provide some really rather interesting capabilities when we can join it with dynamic access control. So as we get started here, file classification. Uh, file classification is a way to be able to tag files with what are referred to as classification properties. The properties are identifiers attached to the file that give us information about it, how we want to use it, who's allowed to access it, things of that sort, that lie outside of our normal permissioning system. With that information, we're going to be able to engage again a number of interesting features that we'll explore. But it's worth pointing out that there's a number of different kinds of tags, different kinds of classification properties that I can set on a file. It's possible to configure, for example, something that is a yes or no flag. Is it true or not that something is like a certain something? I can identify a numeric value associated with a file, counting the number of times that it contains something interesting. I can identify textual properties that assign textual descriptions of that file in some interesting way that I want to analyze later. So those are all perfectly good reasons to want to be able to use classification properties. The next question is how do we get those properties onto the files? What's our mechanism for assigning them? Um, we'll see that there is a manual process for that, uh, but the more common one, the more interesting one, is going to be automatic assignment uh, of those properties by way of the application of classification rules. Classification rules are ways to be able to identify a file to ask the question, should it have a particular property tied to it? And what's interesting about these classification rules is that by contrast to other file management systems we've had in earlier versions of the OS, this feature does allow the ability to search inside files for particular pieces of data rather than simply looking at the name of the file to determine what to do with it. In many cases, what we want to do with a file is determined by its innards, by some interesting piece of text that lies inside of it. And that tells us something about what we intend to do with that file. So we're going to explore those rules, how to create them, uh, and we'll see that those files can in fact be deployed on an automated basis, uh, or I can manually kick off that process. So let me shift gears over to the file server to be able to illustrate some of these ideas for you. So here I am on file server 1. I want to be able to access the data that's in it uh, and turn on classification capabilities. Well, if I look at the default behavior of files on the server just at the moment, I won't see classification properties associated with them. Uh, by way of illustration, if I go visit a particular folder, create a file, uh, pull up its properties, I see traditional tabs. I see the security tab that shows me permissions. I see the details information. We've seen that in earlier releases, uh, previous versions. I don't see a classifications system available to me. That's because I have not yet turned on the piece of server software necessary to make that happen. So to be able to take advantage of this classification scheme I keep talking about, we need to turn on a feature that's necessary to make that happen. Uh, it's called File Server Resource Manager, as we've seen with other components of the Windows OS that we can install. Those components are available to us by way of adding roles and features through Server Manager. You'll see that behavior a lot. Once was the case that we would go to the Control Panel, Add Remove Programs, and Add Software there. That's all now centralized into uh, the Server Manager utility. The place we'll look for that here is again under File and Storage Services, the same place for those of you that attended the iSCSI lesson there's our iSCSI target server there. We're not going there this time, we're going here. File Server Resource Manager, FSRM. FSRM, for those that are curious, was actually introduced with a little known Windows operating system called Windows Server 2003 R2. And you're thinking, well, wait a minute, I didn't know their Windows Server 2003 had an R2 release. Technically, kind of. 
<laughs> Server 2003 was released to much fanfare. It was the uh, server deployment that followed the creation of the Trustworthy Computing Initiative at Microsoft, a, a new focus on security. Server 23 was a great secure OS. After a period of time, the usual collection of bug fixes was collected into Service Pack 1. So, lots of people downloaded Service Pack 1 and uh, installed it and had Server 2003 Service Pack 1. Microsoft did something somewhat surprising. They took the Server 2003 SP1 code and repackaged it as a new product that they could sell. So they sold Windows Server 2003 R2, which was, at the root of it, essentially Windows Server 2003 SP1. But they also included an additional CD that included some helpful add-on utilities, and one of them is this guy. File Server Resource Manager. So FSRM provides a number of interesting features. It provides quota management features. It provides something called file screening that prevents you from putting files on a server uh, unless it uh, matches a certain file name pattern. But again, that's looking at the outside of the file, not the inside of the file. Server 28R2 updated FSRM to include this feature that we're exploring called file classification. So that's finished installing. Let me go ahead and cancel that. And we'll find the tool to administer that here under our tools menu there's file server resource manager now having added that we've introduced the ability to do this kind of file classification that we've talked about and let me illustrate that by jumping back over to Windows Explorer we go back to that test document of mine and pull up its properties this file now has a new tab associated with it that we didn't see a moment ago called classification. We haven't assigned any properties to that file as of yet, but let's do that by way of the FSRM utility. FSRM uses the classic Microsoft Management Console GUI style. There it is. In which we're going to go exploring for features to turn on here. We're going to turn our attention to this section here, Classification Management, and the section below it labeled File Management Tasks, the combination of which is going to help inform what we're going to try to accomplish here. So, first important thing is classification properties. So from this interface, we can start the process of creating a classification property. I'm going to right-click here and create a new one. There are, again, some built-in ones up there up above uh, that provide support for some other features that we'll explore at a later point. But for the time being, creating a local property starts the process of looking at this dialog box. So perhaps my company has co confidential documents, things that are company confidential, should only be kept within the company, not to be circulated outside the organization. And I want to know which files in my organization should be treated with extra care because they're confidential. Well, I might create a confidential documents classification property. I can flag whether a document is a confidential document as a yes or no field. For other kinds of properties, I might specify other kinds of properties. I might specify a property that identifies a file by some interesting number. I go analyze the content and generate some number that describes that file in some meaningful way. I might build a classification scheme that's going to identify a file by assigning some piece of text to it, describing that file with some piece of information. In this case, confidential is either a yes or a no. It either is confidential or it's not. I'm going to click OK. We've now defined the ability for a file to be confidential or not. Well, let's take a look at some documents that might meet that criteria and might not, and let's verify that we can actually apply these rules in a way that will take effect in our organization. I'm going to go back to Windows Explorer. I'm going to go browse down into my app data folder slash drive, inside of which I've got some folders for the production department. The production department has some uh, materials acquisition goals. They want to gather the materials with which to make the things that we produce in our organization. Uh, Global Mantics is production division wants to be able to make sure that they uh, meet the requirements of having enough labor to be able to produce all the resources that are being demanded uh, and they've got some production goals in mind so let's see what they've got for production targets uh, we've got a quality guideline to follow and we've got some output quotas okay quality guidelines yeah it looks like they want to make sure that they're holding down the number of defective uh, components coming off the assembly line to make sure that they don't lose the confidence of the market okay good to know Let's go take a look at the other document. The other document is Output Quotas. Oh, this looks like this is a confidential document. It says so right there in big letters. Confidential. Don't circulate. Okay, ambitious goal, 250,000 units. 
might convince our biggest competitor to accept an acquisition offer. Okay, we don't want to let that information leak out to the outside world. This is a confidential document, and as such, we want to treat it with a certain degree of care. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to tell the system that this file is confidential? Well, what we're going to end up doing sooner or later is configuring a classification property. We're going to see a confidential document property gets set here. Now I can set it manually. I can say yes that's confidential or no it's not confidential or no this property doesn't even apply to this document. But it might be better if I could have that happen on an automated basis. So that's kind of our next logical move. I don't want to have to manually visit every file created by every user in my organization turning on this confidentiality feature. Now I might send out an email that says hey if you know the document is confidential please flag it this way because you know, we've got some business benefit that we derive from flagging those files confidentially and treating them in special ways. We'll talk about some of the ways that we would do that in a bit. So we've seen the manual application of those classification properties, uh, but what about trying to do so in a way that is going to be automated? What I'm going to do is come back over to my classification management area and configure a classification rule. Classification rules provide support for automatically tagging a file with a classification property. Classification properties describe the file. Classification rules determine whether a given property is appropriate to apply to a certain file or not. So here what I want to do is I want to be able to take any files that contain the word confidential and flag them with the confidential document property. So this is, uh, we need a name for the rule. It won't let me get by without naming the rule. So I'm going to create a rule called Documents containing confidential are confidential documents. Uh, it won't let you use single quotes or double quotes. I'm using asterisks here to make it perfectly clear in the description of my rule that I'm intending to watch for files that contain that particular piece of text within the contents of the file. Next question is where do I want to apply this rule? I can't apply it to certain kinds of folders. I've got the ability to target user files or backup files or things of that sort. Or I can specifically name a particular folder scope within my organization. In this case, I want to turn my attention to that app data folder that contains information that the production department is working on for their their application. Having done that, my next question is how do I want to classify these documents? And I've got a couple of options. The one that's relevant for this example is the content classifier. I want to look inside the file, look at its content, and based upon what I see in the content, I want to react by setting a classification property if it seems appropriate. There are folder classifiers that will simply take everything inside of a folder and flag it as having a certain property to it. I can specify which folders I want to apply it to. Something that's relatively new is the PowerShell classifier in which I can run a PowerShell script, analyze a file with that script, and the output of that script will tell the classification system whether or not to flag that file with a particular classification property. So that's kind of a neat trick. Let's take the simplest one, which is the content classifiers. I want to look inside of my file, and if I find certain parameters within it that satisfy my goals here, I want to flag the confidential document property to be able to say, yes, that is a confidential document. Well, how do I know if it's confidential? Well, I'm going to configure that with my configuration button down here. And I can search inside the file in one of three ways. The simplest, most obvious one, and the one that's probably the one you'll implement first, is one simply called string. I can search for a string, a particular piece of text, like the word confidential, inside of my file. And if I see it some interesting number of times, in this example it's at least once, but potentially some large number of times. So in this case, if the file contains at least one occurrence of the word confidential, it is a confidential document and should be treated as such. Now I can, if I choose to, filter that further with particular file name patterns. I'll only apply it to the file if it has that content in it and the file ends in .docx. I'm looking for Microsoft Word documents or things of that sort. I can specify more than one pattern. I'm looking for something that contains the word confidential and I'm looking for some other word. I can specify multiple criteria. There's, if I only need one, I can remove the extra ones that I don't need. But I can specify as many as I need, and there's an and relationship among those expressions. 
a file will only be classified in the way that I've described if it meets all of the criteria that I'm describing. So in this case, I've only got the one criterion. Does it contain the word confidential? If it does, we're going to flag it as a confidential document. One final tab, evaluation type, asks the question, should I keep checking back on this file to see if it continues to meet those criteria? We'll see that I can schedule this classification rule to run on an automated basis. I can have it run every so often. In which case, what happens if we come back to the same document later and somebody took out the statement that says confidential, company confidential only? Do I want to reevaluate it and turn off the confidential flag? Or once it's confidential, do I want to leave it confidential until somebody manually turns it back to not confidential? It's kind of my choice as an administrator. In this case, I'm going to say let's reevaluate. When a conflict occurs between the new and the existing, if I'm about to set it to no, but it currently says yes, I'm going to overwrite. I'm going to throw away what was already there. In the case of some of the other data types, we can do somewhat more interesting things. I can perform uh, various kinds of operations on numeric or, or string data. In this case, we're simply just going to throw away the old value and flip it to the new one. So there's a classification rule. This is a scheme to be able to analyze the files inside the app data folder inside the C drive. When it sees those files, it's going to look inside for the flag that says confidential. If it sees that text inside the document, it's going to trip the trigger to be able to flip the confidential document flag from that document from no or not configured to yes, saying that is now a confidential document. Having done that, we're ready to run this classification rule. I can run it manually here. I've got a couple of commands on the right. Run classification with all rules now. I can say, yep, let's go run our classification. Or I can schedule it to happen later. If I say run it now, we'll see that I can run it right now and wait for the results. Or I can run it in the background and go get the results at some later point. In this case, I'm going to say, go ahead and show me the results. And there we go. Now the, the classification is completed. It found one file that met the criteria that we were looking for and applied our rule to it. That file is now part of the confidential documents collection. We applied the files containing confidential rule to the document called output quotas. That looks good. Looks like we've successfully deployed that configuration change. Let's verify that the file actually has taken on that configuration setting. We can see the confidential document property is set and set to yes. So that's exactly what we were aiming for. Our automated file classification has made that happen. Now that was because I chose to run the rule. Now we could have scheduled the running of the rule. I could have waited to make that classification change until some other convenient moment. Let's go back and take a look at our GUI for that. I can configure a classification schedule. Under a classification schedule, I choose to do all of my classification rules every so often. Maybe I run them you know, once a week. Maybe I run them you know, every single day, on every, every weekday, perhaps. There we go. Do I limit how long it runs? Do I limit how much my log file is allowed to grow while it happens? Do I want to create a log file? And if so, do I want to email it to the administrator when I've finished generating the report that describes what it was that I got done? Not a crazy idea. So that automated scheduling is a handy thing to be able to make sure that I, on an ongoing basis, update these flags. So we've got files that now have these interesting properties tied to them. Now what? Well, what do I do with these files because they are so flagged? Well, I've got some options there. The ones that are relevant to us just at the moment, it's complaining here that I haven't specified a, an email server to email the report to. That's a reasonable, reasonable concern. Uh, I can fix that by coming over here to email notifications and saying which email server I use to get that j uh, job done. smtp.globalmantics.local. Where's that email coming from and who's it going to? There we go. That should make it happy. And it says no SMTP server configured. It's probably checked to see that there is such an SMTP server and found that there isn't one. So that's fine. For our purposes, that's fine. I didn't set up an email server for this demonstration. 
Over off to the left, one more element of the classification management regime, the file management tasks area. And file management tasks here are focusing around what to do with files because they have those properties. We saw properties. We saw how to turn properties on for a file. Now we're going to answer the now what question. At least one part of the now what is going to be the application of file management tasks. In a file management task, I want to search for files that have particular criteria tied to them and do something to them. Maybe confidential documents should be protected somewhat more carefully. I want to use maybe the Active Directory Rights Management uh, Services feature to protect documents that are confidential. To do that, I need to know which files I want to apply that to. And again, I can specify which specific folders or categories of kinds of folders that I'm interested in. In this case, I'm going to go to my app data folder. I want to take an action of RMS encryption. I want to apply RMS encryption to each file that meets certain criteria. We'll talk about RMS in a different lesson. Come on back if you'd like to later on for the Azure Directory Rights Management Services lesson. We'll talk in some detail about how that works. Other options include a file expiration task. File expiration says files that have that particular criteria are expired and should be moved to a particular folder so that I can write them to a DVD and delete them off of the hard drive, for example, files that have a certain criteria. Now, file expiration commonly is going to be tied to a date and time uh, sort of a property. I want to be able to flag a file for the time it was last modified or last accessed. If the file hasn't been read for the last three years, odds are good I don't really critically need it on my file server. I can easily burn it to a CD and hand it to somebody and say, here, if you need those files, here they are. The third one is a custom task, which is worth a quick visit to point out that we can choose an entirely customized operation based upon the presence of a file with a particular property to it. I can specify a particular program that I want to run and exactly what I want to do with that running executable, supplying command line properties, identifying which directory it operates from within to be able to have access to the files that lie inside of that folder, things of that sort. So a lot of functionality to be able to customize the way in which I react to a file that has certain properties to it. So for simplicity's sake, to continue moving through the GUI rather than specify a specific custom action, I'm going to drop back to a file expiration task. And it was, it's going to want to know if I try to move forward, it wants to know what directory I want to put it in. And let's say for the time being, I'm going to copy it into C colon backslash. I'm just going to put it at the root of C for the time being. Notification tab wants to know who I'm going to notify before I take whatever action it is that I've specified in my uh, file expiration process. I'm going to move files to a particular location uh, and in order to do so I want to let people know ahead of time that that's going to happen so that they can take defensive action if they need to. If they know that a document is particularly important they can put a copy of it somewhere that's useful to them. So I can identify the email properties with which to identify who I'm going to notify by email, in what way am I going to notify people by writing an event log entry, in what ways do I want to notify somebody by running some program that performs some operation. Report tab, identifying to whom do I want to send the email report, let them know that I performed that task. Do I want to perform this task only under certain conditions, and if so, what are they? Do I want to run them only if a document is confidential, by way of example. And that file is of a certain age, for example, uh, or was accessed only a certain time ago. And when do I want to run this file management task? We saw that we could automate the execution of file classification rules. This is the flip side of that, automating the execution of file management tasks. The combination of which will cause our classification rules to be applied wherever they need to go, to be able to calibrate those documents to have interesting characteristics that will be of use to us, both for simple file management, we make sure that we apply policy-driven considerations to our file servers. I want to make sure that we're able to use our storage space wisely and clean out unneeded files and move them off of my server. But I also want to be able to make room for this interesting feature called dynamic access control, which we'll discuss uh, in a later lesson. That brings the logical end of this lesson on dynamic access control with a focus on file classification properties. I look forward to talking to you in the next session.